My old grandmother used to say, anything mechanical, give it a good bash. Try now. The Universal Carrier, often called the Bren Gun Carrier. Technically speaking, the Bren Gun Carrier, along with the Scout and Cavalry Carrier, were an earlier version of what would become the Universal Carrier in 1940, which was an improved single design used for transporting personnel and equipment, such as machine guns, including the Bren Gun, of course. In the media and video games, the vehicle is well loved, though it only appears in a handful of movies, though when it does, it's always appreciated. There are many universal carriers that survive today in museums and private collections. They were well built, and built in great numbers with over 110,000 made, with the first production versions being built in 1934, with later versions being built all the way up until 1960. They were primarily built in Britain and Canada, with several thousand built in New Zealand and Australia, shown here as the plant in New Zealand. After their military use, thousands were sold as war surplus. They made handy vehicles for a number of different civilian uses. Some found their way onto farms. Some had their Ford parts taken for use on Ford trucks. And some made their way onto movie sets. Universal carriers were used everywhere within the British Empire in huge numbers. Many were even sent to Russia to support their war effort on the Eastern Front. Thousands were also built in America, and they experimented with the design but ultimately didn't favor them, exporting the majority. The U.S. preferred their own utility vehicles. An incredible number of variants with different guns and configurations were built. They were used everywhere and transported by land, sea, and air. Universal carriers were powered by a Ford V8 engine, producing 85 horsepower mounted along the center of the vehicle. They had a four-speed gearbox, which connected to the back axle. They were considered responsive and fairly easy to drive. They weighed around four tons. One of the most unusual variants to use the chassis of the Universal Carrier was the Praying Mantis. The hull was replaced with a metal box that could be raised along with a machine gun to fire over obstacles. It was apparently horrendous to drive and control, and rejected after trials in 1944. Armor thickness of the Universal Carrier was up to 10 millimeters in areas, but the vehicle was rarely relied on for direct combat, particularly against other armored vehicles. With no head cover on 99% of the carriers, the crew was always exposed from above. The commander and driver sat next to each other at the front of the vehicle. The commander is also in charge of the forward-mounted gun, which can be anything from a Bren gun to a boy's anti-tank rifle. A boy's anti-tank rifle was only effective against light tanks or tankettes. Typically, two additional crew would sit in the back of the vehicle and could operate additional weapons which could include a mortar. The Universal Carrier was unique to Britain with few vehicles like it. The Brits loved the utility of this vehicle. The Universal Carrier had a maximum speed of 30 miles per hour or 48 kilometers an hour. They could scout ahead of tanks and hopefully choose their engagements. Their tracks also meant they could go where a jeep or truck couldn't. They could tow guns and move troops and equipment. They weren't overly comfortable, but they were reliable machines. The Universal Carrier suspension and running gear was based on what was used for the Vickers Light Tank series, using Horseman Springs. Where the Universal Carrier became quite unique, was in its directional control. Driving was done by a car-like steering wheel. Small turns moved a cross tube that carried the front road wheel bogies laterally, warping the track so the vehicle drifted to one side. This worked well for gentle handling. Further movement of the wheel break the appropriate track to give a tighter turn like on most tanks at the time. The suspension was soft on the Universal Carrier, and they were known for frequently bottoming out, particularly when driven fast through the desert. It was common for a Universal Carrier to crush its own exhaust during operations, but they'd still function. Alright, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this little video on the Universal Carrier.
Take care. Have a nice day. And we'll see you in the next one.